Stylist to the Dogs does not recommend clipping and scissoring your own dog if you do not feel confident. Your groomer has a lot of training and experience. Home grooming can potentially cause injury to your dog. This video is to show effective grooming practices and to build awareness around safe grooming techniques. Hey guys, uh, I hope you've liked uh, my videos on um, bathing, nail clipping, ear cleaning and brushing. Um, the only other thing I really wanted to do to show you is um, if you were wanting to do a groom on your dog, you were going to go out and get a set of clippers or you've already got a set of clippers, I will show you how I groom Oscar. I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not telling people they should be going out and buying their own clippers. You still can be taking your dogs to the groomers to get them groomed. Um, but if you were thinking of doing it, I thought I better give you a few tips to make sure you're doing it safely. Uh, you know, the safety of your dog is the most important and you don't want to be causing things to happen that ends up needing to take your dog to the vet. Um, now, you know, the most important thing right now is, is for its health. Um, so getting rid of those knots and ca taking care of its skin. Not necessarily a look. Look doesn't really matter right now. But I still will show you some techniques that I do on Oscar. Oscar, as I explained before, is actually in, um, he's, he's overgrown at the moment because I was going to use him for a grooming competition. Um, and he does actually have a special style on his body. Um, so I am going to keep him in that style. I'm just going to go a lot shorter. So a lot of the processes I do in this video, you're not going to be doing at home with home grooming, but you know, might as well show you and you know, you might even just be curious to see how I do it. Uh, for example, Oscar's hair is a lot longer on his legs than it is on his body and that's to help with the look of his body. So Oscar's, um, as I said, a schmoodle, Shih Tzu Maltese Poodle. He's got this gorgeous poodle um, coat. He's got this gorgeous Maltese expression in his face, uh, but his body's actually quite stocky like a Shih Tzu. Um, so when I groom him, I'm trying to balance him out. If he didn't have all this hair, he's actually quite quite robust in his body and he's got these tiny little skinny legs so he's really robust here tiny little skinny legs and a tiny little head so when I groom him I actually do a lot tighter on his body to make him look not so so robust around here and then bigger fluffier legs and head um, to balance him out so what I'm going to start with is the paw pads. It is quite important um, that their paw pads are nice and flush. This hair here is could potentially make them not be able to grip these paw pads, obviously, for their grip. And if they've got hair growing over the top of it, they are going to slip a lot more or sometimes they can get knots. Um, with that said, it is still important that they've got hair between those paw pads um, for the reasons why it even grows there in the first place. So. The safest way to remove that hair is with a clipper rather than scissors because scissors you could actually cut those paw pads uh, whereas clippers are just going to run over the top. Uh, generally if you're buying um, a set of dog clippers from the pet store you're just going to get a number 10 blade and then you're going to get um, cut guard combs that sit over the top and that changes your lengths. So I'm going to tell you what I think you should be using. Um, so a number 10 blade, uh, I'll grab one. So number 10 blade is what most of the clippers come with. And it is actually 1.8 millimeters in length. That would be totally fine for you to use on your paw pads when you're doing it. As a professional groomer, I use a 40 blade, which is actually only 0.25 mil um, of hair length left for the paw pads. So that's what I'm going to do. And I am literally just scooping out that hair that's sitting in front of his pads. He's lying down, so I'll just do this one while he's lying down. Hold, to hold their legs um, in a safe way, the back legs 
can come, the back legs can come out and go forward back, out, forward back. That's a safe way to hold the back legs and that's fine. So I can just hold his foot up like this out to the side and scoop out. Front ones are different. Front ones should only go forward and back. So you don't want to be pulling out too much on your dog's front ones. So forward and back. So just holding them up like this. We can do that pad. Spinning around, do the other one. You can also do it from the front. If they're wanting to sit or something like that, that's fine. You just pull it forward and do it this way. As I was explaining with your uh, handling, don't let go, um, but move with their movement. So if he was trying to pull his leg away, I'd just wait, let him pull away, let him pull away, let him pull away until he stops, and then keep going. So pulling away, pulling away. Good boy. So that's pull pads. Um, hygiene areas. So with your number 10 blade, which is what I actually do use, so that's great. That will come with your set of clippers. 10 blade. Um, hygiene areas, so areas that um, potentially get knotted up and matted up, um, which the back of the ear here, where I was explaining with the um, back of the ear here, where I was explaining with your brushing, um, one, if you did have a knot there, you'd have to be getting that knot out with the clippers. So what we do is flush the skin completely so you don't have any of the ear flaps or anything out. And I'm not going to do it on Oscar because he doesn't need it he doesn't get knots back there you would be going under the knot scooping out under the knot from there underarms is another big one underarms get a lot of knots under here so under here also scooping out with your clippers I might I don't usually do that on Oscar because he's pretty good uh, but I might do it I might do it with him for this time because we're just trying to keep him maintained anyways So just right under there where you can't see, just got a little bit of hair out for maintenance. The other hygiene area is obviously underneath here. So with a boy dog, I'm just going to be doing this area here and along here and um, on his bum a bit. Um, females, same general area. Now the thing with doing hygiene areas, a lot of people are scared about doing them uh, because it's quite a scary area to do, but the the rule really is to do it um, nice and flush against the skin. The closer you get to the skin, the more it's not going to be pulling at any knots you might have under there. So you're wanting to go as close as you can to the skin and scoop under the hair. If you're just sort of being a bit scared about it and scooping off from the top, then you're pulling at the hair with the clippers and that's when the dogs get irritated and, and try and pull away from you. So close flush to the skin and and yes yeah, so the closer you can get to the skin and flush movements flush movements close to the skin you can go in any direction with this blade side um he's bum we're wanting to just clean up all this area around here so we can do um, any direction. Um, a trick for getting them not to sit down, hand under here and then hold that tail up with that arm.
Same rule as the um, other hygiene area, as close as you can to the skin and scoop that knot out. So that's it. Uh, and then also I pick him up from the front like this to do around this bit here. Now, with these clippers, make sure you are checking them regularly and that you can hold your hand on it for longer than mm, three seconds. If that's if you can't hold your hand on that clipper for longer than three seconds, it's too hot and you need to cool it down before you keep using it on your dog. You should be checking that regularly. Okay, move on to his body. Um, so, with Oscar's clip today, like I said, I'm going to go short on his body and then longer on his legs. I am going to give him some um, Bichon Freeze uh, definition, which is rounded and, and all of that kind of thing, which I'm not going to explain into too much detail. Um, but general rule when you're doing your clipping, so uh, I'm going to use, I'm going to give him a, a shorter top line up here. Um, I'm going to use all of my clip-on combs today because that would generally be what you would get. Um, with your clippers or you can buy them separately as well. These aren't actually too expensive um, So you've got your different lengths on the back here. I might use Because I want to go pretty short so these ones one is the shortest eight is the longest I want to go pretty short so I think I might just do a two which is a One quarter length on his top line. So that just sits on top of the clippers like that. Come back here. In general rule you're going with with the hair growth, with the grain. to go a little bit shorter again in this area here because we want that quite tight. them back to my material here. Okay. Down these sides I'm gonna go one longer. So this is sort of um, a little trick for teaching you about um, grooming, professional grooming, we don't actually do the same length on the whole of the dog because what we're trying to do is make the dog look pretty and balanced. Um, like I said, he needs to be shorter here, longer here, so and then I'm going to blend it in. Um, so, uh, whereas you at home, you could just do one length all over your dog, that's no problem at all, and just whatever length you want with these guide cones. So I'm going one up again to a number, the number three uh, for this bit here. Uh, this is a three eighth.
I want to show off this shoulder bit, so I am going to go short through here. At this point in his leg, I'm actually scooping off. So I'm not going with his leg, I'm actually just scooping straight down to the ground. And I'm not going right up here. Um, I actually want to create a little bit of a, um illusion here that he's a sh shorter dog this way. So we're going to be leaving all this hair here and making him look like his leg comes up further up here. Um, with your dogs that you're doing, um, don't worry about that because this can knot up a lot. Um, so you you would want to be taking that completely off. But when you're doing this area, this is called the flank. Um, you've got to be very careful with your clippers that you don't actually catch that this bit here in your clippers. See that's like a uh, just like a little flap of skin there that can easily get caught in this bit and then get cut with your clippers. So with that bit, you're wanting to only go down it this way, down this way, so you're not catching it. You don't want to be going into it like that. Um, so only down this way and then t pull it tight so you don't actually have that. So I'm pulling his skin tight so he doesn't have that flanky bit to then do it this way. For his front here, I'm going to use a really tight blade as well, like I did at the back, because he is a long dog. He's supposed to be a lot taller um, by look-wise to balance him out. So to make him look taller, I'm going to make him shorter this way by going short here and short here. So I'm going down to my shortest clip-on comb I have. And just straight down his neck. If I want to go even shorter, I can go against the brain. Up there by his neck. You generally want your dogs to stand when you're doing all of this um, because their body changes when they're sitting. Um, but, you know, for a pet trim, it's not so much of an issue. And then underneath his belly, he's going to also be done short because as I was saying to you before, we're trying to create an illusion of height, um, trying to make his legs look longer. So we're gonna pull this tight here to, to make, we're trying to make this bit of his body match this bit of his body. We've got short legs, so we'll go short here, short here, short here, short here, long here, long here, long here. So when you're clipping like this, um, same rules apply with these flanks. You do not want to run your clippers down onto those flanks in this in this um, way. So I'm only going down this bit, not towards these flanks. 
Um, so generally with clipping, we use, um, we're trying to get the hair all, all nice and straight. So we use these things with the grain, but then we brush against the grain and go over it again to give it a nice flush finish. Uh, so you can use your comb or your brush for this. Um, if I was doing proper show grooming, I'd be using a comb because he would be completely fluff dried out and he'd have every single hair would be completely straight. So I'd be using a comb to fluff dry him, to fluff his hair up and then go running back over it again. Um, but he, I like to use my slicker brush a lot too, just to get those hairs up and then running over it again with the same clipper blade. Uh, it's best to also do your, your clipping after your dog's been washed uh, because you want the hair to be clean and each hair to be separated and that's when you're going to get a nice flush finish. So a bath and then a brush, a blow dry and then a brush to get all those hairs sticking out individually and then um, running over it with the clippers with the grain of the hair, brushing away from the grain of the hair and then running again with the grain of the hair on, with your clippers. So we'll do that now. I'll run over him again, remembering what ones I used in each part of his body. So as you can see, more hair comes off now. So more hair came off then, even though I used the same blade length. So same here, brushing up. and then down with your clippers. Usually I would just do each area with the one blade before I swap between them, but I'm showing you guys, so. here so I'll do this again so I have to swap the blades brush up brushing up clipping down All these bits here it's um, quite messy still brushing up clipping down and you can do this over and over until you get it nice and flush I'm doing this uh, a bit more rushed than I normally would because I'm filming it for you guys, so just so you know. Um, that's as much as I would clipper on Oscar and the rest of him is going to be scissored in. But I hope I've, I've, I've explained, um, you know, there's some, some trouble areas for you is this blank, it's a big one. Um, being careful around the hygiene area. Um, ears as well, make sure if you're clipping around their face uh, that you don't actually ever catch their ear into that clipper like that because that's going to cut their ear. You need to make sure their ears flush and that you're going 
out along each part so you're sort of fanning out along the ear so you're not going to have any chance of catching the ear. Um, I will show you guys some scissoring techniques though. I think you probably do need to, to get a, a pair of um, hairdressing scissors if you're going to be trying this. You can't really use you know, kitchen scissors to be cutting your dog's hair. And it's probably a good idea to just have a pair there anyways in case you need to do um, cut out a knot in your dog's hair. Um, you're probably best to have one of those scissors there. Um, you know, some of the, the dog clipper kit, the clipper kits will come with a pair of scissors that you can use. Can we come back over here? Or are you going to go sit over there? 